Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you around my brand new Nissan Elgrand. So this is a van that I've recently purchased, I got it about a month ago now, maybe six weeks ago, and this is a van that I got as a little project to have a very basic conversion on. So right now, I've pretty much kept the van standard, it's something that I'm going to be slowly adding more bits to over the summer, but as it's 2021, the year after we haven't been able to travel all that much abroad, I decided to buy myself a van that I could get out in a basic way and just travel around the UK and enjoy. So I'm going to show you right now all around the van and show you some of the little features that it's got because I think it's a pretty cool van. Um, I've had VWs for ages. You might have seen my Instagram channel CT Builds and that page just shares all of the air cooled builds that I've got. So I've been building an old bay window camper. I've restored two Beetles but this is my first Japanese car and so far I like it. So I'm going to show you around the van in this video now. So here we've got the van. It's a pretty decent size. Um, I think it's something that I was really debating for a while, like what size van to go for. And I just went for the option of a short wheelbase L Grand. So it's actually a three and a half liter engine, which is the same engine as a Nissan 350Z. Um, it's pretty powerful. It's really luxury inside this van. Honestly, I was surprised when I got it. I feel like this has been designed as a luxury people carrier because the features it has, even from standard, are pretty insane compared to other builders vans that you usually convert. So I've not done many mods to this van yet at all. All I've done is added a little uh, 12 volt extension here, which is able to charge lightning um, for charging a Mac computer, which is pretty cool. And I've hooked up a HDMI cable here, which means that when I plug in my phone, the video comes out there and powers all of the speakers, which is nice. So I'll get straight onto the camping setup now. This is from standard, a seven seater vehicle. I think maybe even eight. Um, so there are two rows of seats. You've got seats, obviously the front two. You've got the first row here. And then at the back, there are actually two other seats. I will show in this video the seats folding out because I think it's a really nice configuration. Um, but what I've done for starters for my first bed setup is I've just left the seats as standard. I got a memory foam topper just to fit on the back seats. And then what I do is I just fold out the bed and I just put a couple of wooden planks under it. Honestly, it's really simple, but my mission for now is not to make this van complicated. I think a lot of people with getting their first van or first camper van, they really overcomplicate things and just make everything way too complex. But honestly, all you need to start with is a bed and that's what I'm going for with this van. So I'll do a little walk around now so you can see the entire vehicle. I think it's a really nice shape, honestly. It's a people carrier by design. It's got these extra wheels that my the previous owner has added, but I think they're pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave them for now. It did come with some stock wheels, but I sold them immediately just to recoup some of the cost for a few hundred quid, which was nice. Um, the cool thing about this van is that it's got electric sliding door so it's twin sliders both sides it's got the doors like you can see and i'll show you a couple of the little features i've added here now so the seats fold forwards really easily and slide back there's loads of storage underneath here um i've got this little cooler that plugs in to 12 volts so you can put a load of food in there just store my water in one of these big bottles that i fill up all the time and now i will show you what the bed looks like as you can see it's actually a pretty big bed um, this mattress topper is just something I got off eBay. It's like a four inch thick memory foam topper. Underneath, I literally have this low tech solution of putting two wooden boards under there. And it worked really well just because, um, you know, when you fold down the seats, it isn't all that comfortable. I did try sleeping with this topper just on the seats as they are, um, but it's kind of a funky shape and it's a little bit wavy. So I just decided to use those couple of pieces of wood that I cut up and they quite nicely just slide underneath the bed when I'm not using it so I find that really useful. Um, the reason I went for this bed is just because it's super simple. Um, I can make it a single bed if I want to. I can kind of do this half set up where there's just one half folded down and the other side flipped up to the side like I'll show you in a minute um, but it makes it a really versatile setup which is great. So yeah the setup in the back of the van is honestly very simple at the moment. Um, I've literally just got a bed here and that's it. I've, I can kind of use this space just down here as storage, which is really useful. So you can see the van's big enough that I can sit in it, sit full height, and it works really well. Um, it's got loads of little compartments for storage all around. 
you can see we've got cup holders down here. This is my little curtain rail, which seems to work really well. I just use these clips. I just clip it up on the trim panel right here and then hang a towel over the front. Very low tech, but again, low tech stuff does seem to work. That cooler box that I popped outside, that normally just fits right here with the front seat slid forwards while I'm camping or while I'm sleeping. Um, the curtains all round are really useful. They're literally just stock curtains, but they all work on electric, on electric system. So you've got these buttons up here. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. And you can just literally flick them, boom. And um, they all shut, so you can be driving along with the curtains shut or open. You can open the rear one so you can see out. Really useful. Um, these lights I've managed to set up just from a very, very simple setup. They were a kit I bought off eBay and I've just wired them in. I took part, part of the headliner at the back just to get them underneath. And so I just connect them to this little power bank that I have right here in the cup holder, which is cool. So this is literally just like a anchor USB charging system. I got a, an extender for the USB off Amazon. I plug that in there. And then when I use this um, remote, really easy, they just turn on. You can see they can go different colors. I think they're pretty low at the moment, but yeah, they can go loads of different colors. It's plenty bright enough. At night, you can really just light up the entire van. And the nice thing about that is at the moment, I haven't had to stress about setting up a leisure system, um, split charge system, or anything like that. Honestly, this van is something that I've bought just to use practically. I don't want to overcomplicate the design, so I'm not overcomplicating it, I'm keeping it so simple. And honestly, like so far, it has been a godsend because I've been able to use this van. I've probably driven a thousand miles in a month since I've owned it. I've been from here in Bristol down to Cornwall. I went to Land's End last weekend um, for a couple of days. I've been up north, I've been back to where my family live in Buckinghamshire, and it's been great. You know, the features of driving is that it's super comfortable. It's got this nice armchair seat. All of the seats have these little armrests, which is pretty gangster, I think. I really like it. You've got, it's automatic. It's got cruise control, even adaptive cruise control. So while you're driving, you can just hit, hit cruise and um, keeps the distance away from you. Makes me feel like I'm in a Tesla, which I quite like. Uh, it's got full air con. You've got, you can even watch stuff here. There's a TV in the back you've got this tv so whatever's playing on the front screen there can play in the back so if i'm driving people along in the back or if i want to sit in the bed at night just watch a little bit of tv which is kind of cool you don't get that in most camper vans so turn that off another one of those features that's kind of ridiculous but again i'm not going to complain because it's just a funky feature they turn off the key you can see here it's actually a keyless car so you, all you need to do if i can reach it switch it off and i normally just sit sit the keys here i got an aftermarket alarm fitted um you can see this little fob here it's an aftermarket alarm this is the stock key but that was just because my insurance wouldn't insure it without fitting that for some reason um but yeah honestly there's not all that much more to say it's a very simple setup um i do have plans in the future to go around the back and create another little unit here. So as much as I've got this tailgate, which is really useful for standing underneath and cooking and stuff like that, what I wanna do is push this bed forwards a bit, which you can do on the seats, and um, maybe build a little unit here that has storage for water, a little sink, um, maybe a spot for the fridge, some storage for food. But until then, I've just got this reliable setup. There's a little camping stove, which is cool. In the back, I just keep some of my clothes that I use frequently, like a coat and some spare shoes washing up, a um, little towel. You've got storage under here, which is nice. Um, got a longboard in the back, got a little bit of fuel, some food, <laughs> and a slack line. All the good stuff, really. Um, but yeah, it's a great van. My plan with it is to keep it simple and just use it as much as I can, and then potentially, at some future point, I will maybe think about doing a full conversion, like completely ripping the seats out, taking out this luxury bed, <laughs> and um, yeah, building a setup with maybe a side unit. But again, at the moment, I just don't need it. It's, it's really simple and it works for me. So it's good, even air con all the way through to the back. So I think honestly for the price, having a van like this is really good um, because you've got the luxury of 
a high, highly engineered, probably over-engineered Japanese people carrier, but at the same time, you've got the practicality of a really nice camper van that can cruise easily. It's got nice disc brakes at the front, disc brakes at the back. Um, again, like I said, the engine's from a Nissan 350Z, so it's a three and a half litre, 250 horsepower engine, which is cool. But biggest downside is the economy. <laughs> this bad boy gets a lot of action. So that's a bit of a shame, but yeah, my plan is to probably convert it to LPG at some point, uh, maybe soon, because then I'm going to be a lot more efficient, maybe having a bit of a lesser impact on the environment, which is something I definitely do think about. This is, um, yeah, it's probably the biggest downside of the van, but all in all, I think it's an awesome vehicle that is definitely underrated compared to most camper vans you see. Like there are so many people out there that are going for VW transporters and absolutely breaking the bank, but I paid under 7K for this van and all in with the accessories I've done to make it usable as a camper, I'm still under seven grand. So I don't really think I can argue with that, to be honest. Like it's something that is such a nice vehicle inside and out. It's got 90,000 miles on it. It's been regularly serviced. And yeah, it just works. So hope you enjoyed that little look around of the van. I just thought it'd be cool to pop a video up there just to share the setup, share um, the van as a whole, because I think it's a really cool one. These Nissan Elgrands, they're very underrated, I reckon, in the UK. And the reason I went for that over the transporter, mainly for me, was financially motivated. Like if I could, I would have got T5, but I don't have a spare 10, 20K to drop on it. and. This was pretty much the max out of my budget. And I think for this vehicle or a T4, like in my head, this has lower miles, maybe more reliable, way more features. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be selling my car, which is just a Polo, to use this as my main vehicle. So it's just one of those things that I'd rather have a bit of luxury, which maybe it's just me being fancy, but I like it. I think it's a cool one. But yeah, so on this channel, my main mission is just to share all of the builds that I'm doing, some information about my van, and future projects that I'm working on. I do also have a VW camper van that I'm building at the moment, a bay window, which is a 1970. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that already. I've had that maybe even close to four years now. So it's a longer term project, that's for sure, but it's gonna be worth it. That's gonna be returning to my air-cooled roots of building a really nice bus. And that is having work done on it right now. A friend of mine, Connor, who's up in Lincolnshire, also called Connor, is um, building that for me, or he's helping out at least, installing hydro, doing all the welding on it. And the plan is for that to be kind of like a show vehicle, weekend vehicle, and for this van here to be my more usable camper that hits a lot more miles. But I will definitely be going out in the bus bay window a lot more often as well, as soon as it's ready. I'll give some updates on this channel as soon as I'm moving forwards with that, because I think it'll be cool to share the journey there. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more videos about my El Grand, then just let me know. I can focus on specific features and I'll give updates as I go. But yeah, if this is your first time seeing me, seeing the channel, then definitely subscribe because I'm going to pop videos up as much as I can. And yeah, thanks everyone. I'll see you in the next video.